everybody and welcome to this video where today I'm going to answer the age-old question, who actually even reads poetry? The reason why this comes up is I've heard poets and very highly educated people talk about this thing and it drives me crazy because the answer to this question and the thing to fix this problem is very very easy and we'll talk about that in a minute here let's first hit this problem where most people in academic circles in poetic circles in literary circles say the only people who read poetry is other poets this is true for a lot of these people. This isn't true across the board. This is true for a lot of these people. And here, here's the deal. Here's the rub. The reason why the only people who read poetry, for the most part, in these circles are other poets is because the one thing poetry does, I would say more so than any other art form, at least written art form, is that poetry has the ability to inspire masses, okay? And some of you might be going, well, all art inspires, or else it's not really art, is it? But here's the thing. I can go to a museum and see a beautiful sculpture and be inspired to sculpt something, and I'll come home and get out either the Play-Doh or the clay and try to sculpt something, and it'll look like a fucking broken dildo. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to look like what I fucking saw at the thing. And it's going to be frustrating. And then I will stop. Okay. I can go see a painting, a beautiful oil painting. And then I'll come home and get my oils out. And it'll look like a fucking toddler through a tantrum. Okay. And that's not going to help me. But poetry in its simplest form, is something that is inspiring to people when it touches people. And when it is inspiring, someone can begin to replicate that. And that is how a lot of people come into poetry, because they read poetry, and it fucking touches them, and they're like, fuck, man, oh, shit. And then they're like, I'm gonna take a stab at that. Like, I have some fucking emotions. That fucking touched me deeply. I'm going to fucking write something now. Now, the problem that you're going to have with your more formal poetry is that... Because, like, one thing I hear people say is that, like, free verse poetry is bullshit because, like, the bar of entry is so low, you know? And that's what formalists say to fucking hang their hat on so they could, like, feel good about something. You know what I'm saying? So the thing here is, okay, that's great. Free verse poets have set the bar to entry really low. So now there's just a ton of people writing free verse poetry and loving it. Whereas with formal poetry, you've set the bar so high, I guess I'm supposed to say to make you feel good about yourselves. You've set the bar of entry so high that most people don't want to fucking even try. Or worse, they're just not fucking inspired by the trite formal poetry that you write. Okay, and this was not, like, I did not record this video to start talking shit on formalists, but it just came up in the way I'm talking here. So, with that said, if you are good at what you do, whether you're a free verse poet or a formalist poet, if you are good at what you do, your work should inspire people, okay? If your work doesn't inspire anyone, you are not a good poet. You are not doing your job. Your work has no feeling, okay? And that here's the other thing too, is that I'm not saying that the only people who read poetry is other poets. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying your work should inspire readers to want to be poets. I have a lot of readers who have become poets reading my work. I have a lot of readers who aren't poets, but they read my work. And a lot of other poets out there can't say that. A lot of poets out there cannot say that they have readers that don't write poetry, okay? The only difference here between me and somebody else is that the stuff I do inspires people. That's it. My poetry has feeling. It makes people look inside themselves and want to explore themselves, all right? So when people say, oh, only poets read poetry, and they say that as that's a bad thing, that's fucking ludicrous. 
That is what you should want because again, you want more people reading poetry. And if your poetry is any fucking good, those people will become poets. But when that circle does not expand, when that circle just stays like this and does not expand, that's when you fucked up and the art form will die. As long as it's growing, that's what's good. Another thing is, is that I have readers who are totally uneducated fucks and they like my shit. I have readers who are college educated people. I have readers who are in university programs now who love my shit, okay? And for some reason, when I've said this to people, there are some people that are shocked by that. There are some people who are shocked that educated people would like my stuff. And they, they, they'll they like guffaw. Oh, 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 like really? Like what the fuck is that? You know, it's just, it's shocking. So it, it kind of goes back to that whole story of the shoe salesman in the jungle. Do you guys know this story? I probably said it before, but if I've said it once, it's worth repeating, right? Two shoe salesmen <laughs> get dropped off in the jungle. Okay. Their boss wants them to sell shoes okay so these two shoe salesmen are like walking through the jungle and then they come across like a bunch of people okay and they're watching them and they're you know working they're walking around they're doing whatever the fuck it is is happening in this jungle okay they're hunting all sorts of other shit and the one shoe salesman is like oh this fucking sucks dude we got to get out of here. And he gets on the phone and he calls his boss and he's like, get me the fuck out of here. Like no one here wears shoes. This is like the absolute worst place you could have dropped us off at. Send the helicopter, pick me up, get me the fuck out of here. This is stupid. And then he's like, starts heading back to where the helicopter is going to pick him up at. And he looks back and the other shoe salesman isn't coming with him. And he's like, w-? he's like, come on, we got to get out of here. This is stupid. He's like, what are you talking about? This is perfect. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, nobody here wears shoes. This is the perfect place to sell shoes. It's all about mindset and how you look at stuff. Okay. So I'm going to write poetry for everyone. And I am going to inspire them all to be poets. Not because I'm sitting here going, you guys have to be poets. But because there is so much feeling in my work, people are going to read it and then want to write poetry. That is what you want to have happen. Fucking inspire people. That is what you want to have happen. You want to inspire people. Okay, so hopefully this was interesting for some of you. Whatever. Bloodshed review out now at my Etsy shop with... Shaylin Marks, Mindy Simonson, and Jeff Taylor. My book, Winner Your Mom Sodomy Prize for Poetry, also at the Etsy shop. Limited run of these, limited run of those. And vote for Blood Rag Poet of the Year while there's still time. Okay. With all that said, inspire people, everybody. Sell those shoes. Type art, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.